Now, let us understand what is actually wave motion. Now, in sound, uh, sound if you are considering a source, uh, source is there which is producing some amount of sound, it will propagate through a particular medium, right. I hope so you understand the point that light does not require any medium for propagation, but sound do requires, right. Uh, the best example that I can give you is the sunlight travels through a huge vacuum space and reaches the earth. But uh, for sound case, you require a material medium. So, when the sound or the disturbance which you call requires a material medium to propagate, how does it propagate? It propagates in the form of a wave. The disturbance propagates in the form of a wave. So, we are going to understand now what is actually a wave motion. To best understand and visualize this wave motion, I can give you an example. Now, let us take a stagnant water case, okay. So, let us say you have a bucket filled with water and uh, the surface of the water is totally stagnant, okay. Or you can say the surface of a pond also, huge surface of a pond and the surface is totally stagnant for the experiment, okay. Let us say you dropped a pebble or let us say a small stone into the water. What do you think will be happening? you will observe ripples around it, right and the ripples will be travelling outwards. If you observe, this is the source or this is the point where you threw the stone, there will be ripples which will be travelling outward position towards the outer part of the system like let us say water in the bucket or in the pond and all that, right. So, it is propagating outward. This disturbance format is called as actually a wave. Now, we are going to try to understand what actually this is wave, what actually is this wave. Now, does this mean that when I threw the stone into this particular position, the particles of water started moving in this direction which gave me a visualization as if the wave or the disturbance is propagating in this region. So, this might be a common misconception. Like you might be feeling that the water gets displaced in the outward region and that is what is actually the wave. But that is not actually the wave. Now, if you observe properly, you will find that the water particles, let us say there is a water particle here. This particle will not move this way, it will only move up and down from the surface. Meaning, if this is your surface, the water particles of the surface only move vertically up and down, they do not move radially outwards. Now, this can be clearly seen by putting a leaf, let us say you have put a leaf on the surface of the water where the ripples are being formed. You will see that the leaf will not propagate outwards, it will only move up and down as the wave crosses through it. This clearly tells that the wave is the motion of the particles at the same position. Only thing is that it is making the particles vibrate at the same position without making it displaced from its position in the outward direction, which gives you a visualization as if there is a wave propagating. So, we will try to visualize how does a particle movement give us that visualization of a wave, okay. To understand wave motion, first let us understand the categories of it. We have basically two types of categories of wave motion, transverse wave and the second one is a longitudinal wave. So, what is transverse wave? Now, according, when do we say that a wave is a transverse wave? If a disturbance propagates in this direction and there are particles in the medium, as I am speaking there are particles in this medium, right? So, these are the particles in the medium. If the particles in the medium are moving perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave, meaning this is the direction of the disturbance, but the particles are moving perpendicular to it. So, if I am saying the large number of particles like this and the particle is moving perpendicular to the direction of disturbance of that particular medium, then we say that this wave is propagating as a transverse wave. Now, let us see how actually will the appearance of a wave format come. So, let us say you have a medium and there are some large number of particles. I will draw some few position of some few particles here. So, there are large number of particles and I want to see as a disturbance propagates through the medium, how a particle will be displaced from its position and try to take a snapshot. Like let us say I have given you a camera and I have asked you to roll the camera or take the snapshots after every small small intervals of time. How will the picture look? So, let us see. Right now, there is no disturbance. So, all the particles are at the mean positions, meaning the undisturbed position, right? So, after some time, disturbance hits. So, the first particle is going to get displaced from its mean position. So, we are talking about transverse wave. So, the particle will be displaced perpendicular to it. So, let us say this is the position of the particle. What about the position of this particle? It is not yet disturbed by the disturbance, right? So, if I take a snapshot and draw the join or join the dots or the position of the particles, what do I get? I will get something like this format. This will be the picturization of it. 
Now, after let us say some delta t seconds later, let us say this particle would have reached this particular point. I am presenting with a green dot here and obviously the disturbance would have hit this particle. So, this will also get displaced, would have come to a bit lower position as compared to this one and this is not yet hit. So, it is at its mean position. So, what will be the locus looking like? Locus means joining all the dots or position of the particles at a certain time. So, this is the representation. Now, let us say after certain amount of furthermore time, you are saying that there is some particle, this particle has gone a bit more further. Let us say make it as a star part here and this has gone to some position like this. This has got hit with the wave and this is still at this point. So, if I draw, join them, I see something like this particular thing, right. Now, do you think this particle is going to infinite position? No. This particle will have a maximum position up to which it can be displaced from its mean position. It is not going to go to infinite position. So, let us say it has reached to its maximum limit. So, what is the next tendency? A pendulum, displace it from a certain mean position and leave it. Its position will be back to the mean position, right? Tendency will be back to the mean position. So, next this tendency is to come down. So, let us say the particle tries to come down. What about this particle? It has not yet reached its extreme position. So, it will still go further up. This will also be in a tendency to go up. This will be also in a tendency to go up. So, say somewhere here. So, if you draw the locus, what are you observing here? Something like this. Just try to understand. It is not that perfect diagram there. Okay. So, this is the current position. Now, what about after some in amount of furthermore time? This is trying to come back to its mean position. So, let us say this is your case. This had reached its extreme position. So, we will have a tendency to come down while this would have reached its maximum position. This would have come to this point and this will just get displaced and this would be not yet touched. So, if I draw the locus of this position of the particles, I am going to get something like this. This will be the format. Have a look. It feels as if the tip of the wave is propagating. That does not mean the particle this has gone to this point. This particle is still at that point. Only thing is that the tip moves forward. So, this is what we represented as a wave. So, what do you think will be the next diagram for this case? So, this would have come to the mean position, the tip would have reached to this, this events would have hit here. And if you have numerous number of particles here, you could have drawn. Then what about this? This particle reached the mean pendulum, so goes to the other extreme, so it will come to this point and then this particle would have reached some point or here somewhere like this. So, you will have a wave reaching like this and then tipping here. So, you see that the wave tip is propagating in the forward direction. So, this is what is your representation of a wave or let us say after some time the wave will appear like this. So, the disturbance would have reached this particular point by the time this particle would have completed one complete oscillation. So, from this point to this point, by the time taken for this particle to complete one position, one complete oscillation, the distance moved by this disturbance is this much and that is defined as the wavelength of the wave. So, this is called as wavelength or lambda of the wave. That means what? It is a distance moved by the disturbance by the time the particle comes back or completes one complete oscillation. So, after having a look at all this, I hope so you must have understood how a transverse wave actually uh, appears to be. Uh, it does not make the particles move in the same direction. It just makes the particles move in the vertical perpendicular direction, though the wave motion is moving in this particular direction or disturbance is moving in this particular direction. Now, here are certain terms that I would like to introduce here. We already learned the term as wavelength. What is that? That is the distance moved by the disturbance by the time one particle completes one oscillation completely. And the time taken for the particle to complete one oscillation is called as the time period denoted by generally t. So, that means in capital T seconds, the disturbance had traveled a distance of lambda. So, what is the disturbance speed or the wave speed? So, the wave speed, speed is generally what? Distance by time. What is the distance it has traveled? Lambda distance. How much time did it take to travel that? By t. That is it. So, lambda by t is called as your wave speed. Let us denote it as v. Now, here another point frequency. Frequency denoted as nu is given as 1 by t. 
number of vibrations that a particle makes in one second. Now it takes some uh, t seconds to complete one vibration. In one second, how many vibration does it complete is called as your frequency of vibration and its unit is written in hertz and time period I hope so you know it is written in seconds, wavelengths in meters, wave speed in meters per second. Something new about this amplitude. So what do you mean by amplitude of a wave? So whenever I give you a wave like this, what do you mean by amplitude? Amplitude is the maximum distance that any particle can go from its mean position when disturbed. So observe this particle, it could go up to this extent. So this is called as the amplitude of this particle. If you observe, every particle was displaced by a, at the same amount, not at the same time, but by the same amount. So every particle in this medium has got the same amplitude. So what do you mean by amplitude? Amplitude is the maximum distance that a particle can move from its mean position under a case of disturbance. So generally denoted by symbol A. And uh, during a transverse wave propagation, if I say this is your wave, I have taken a photograph right now and this particle is here, this particle is here, this particle is here, that means this particle is here and let us say some wave is like this, a part of a wave, I have drawn. This part of the wave is called as the crest and this part is called as the trough. That means this is again called as a crest and this is again called as your trough. The distance between any two consecutive trough or the distance between any two consecutive crest is called as your wavelength, lambda. So this is lambda or this is lambda.